Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to touch on the topics of stairs and the ADA guidelines that relate to them. So to begin the discussion of stairs we really want to think about the style of architecture and how the stairs are integrated into the design. So stairs are very impactful um, in a space, in our perception of the design, the style, um, the openness, and, and that type of thing. So um, we're primarily looking at residential design applications, but you know many of these things, of course, apply to commercial uh, applications as well. So looking at the various drawings over on the right, we're going to see some typical uh, stair configuration. So, so, you know, really starting in that left column, we're seeing a you know pretty standard, straightforward, um, straight run. Uh, whether we have the overrun um, happening at the top, the bottom, or possibly an intermediate landing um, somewhere in between. In this case, shown at the halfway point. Then moving over here, we're seeing some different uh, situations, uh, such as a ninety degree angle across the top um, and you know as we have that 90 degree turn or it could in theory be less um, we can have different conditions and you know the really the most common are either to have a uh, flat landing so a flat turn or while that turn is happening you'll actually see that you get that kind of winder stairs look so the stairs have that triangular or you know pizza shape to them kind of a wedge shape so they get really narrow as they pinch um, into the corner and wider out towards the outer edge um, we could also have more of a 180 degree turn and then really a similar condition where we either make that turn on a flat landing or the stairs can wind around that um, situation as well uh, we can also have a flat landing in each corner or those triangular shaped winder stairs in each corner and straight stairs in the middle. It's another option. And, you know, finally, we can start thinking about that whole idea of spiral stairs, um, having a radius or a curve, um, possibly a full spiral or just, you know, kind of a sweeping curve to it. So just a brief introduction into some of the shapes you might see and think about when um, considering stairs in a project. A few um, pictures to sort of, you know, think about some typical conditions. So all of the images on this page are pretty standard uh, stair conditions in which the uh, one side, I should say, um, is up against a wall, you know, and in these um, situations, you know, up against a standard drywall or plaster wall, um, maybe with some wainscoting decorative molding, maybe showing a little bit more of a curved appearance. Um, and then over here on the right, uh, more contemporary, more modern application. Um, and the noticeable thing about that difference is really with these modern stairs, we have open risers. So the rise of the stairs uh, right here is, is open. There is no wood or metal panel or anything like that. So it's allowing you to see through and giving it, you know, a sleeker, more contemporary appearance. Or all of these, um, you know, have a more standard, solid look, um, both in terms of the riser and the tread, the part that we step on. Um, you know, whether it be with wood railing, newel posts, balusters, or, you know, a different kind of metal look. Two examples here, um, you know, one being more traditional uh, on the left, one being more contemporary, more modern on the right, uh, but both um, having more of that floating kind of feel, that floating appearance, um, you know, showing a, a railing on both sides, uh, whether it's more traditional um, curved wooden rail with um, the thin balusters um, uh, going down to the stairs, or on the right, you know, being um, kind of floating between those glass panels just with that floating rail um, you know and we're seeing um, you know a simple rise and tread but very minimal um, treatment underneath you can see the underside here so not a traditional stringer that we might think of um, but really much more of that kind of you know floating contemporary look we can also be thinking about uh, you know more uh, traditional applications, you know, in older homes, older Victorian homes, things like that, and how 
remarkable and truly decorative and intricate uh, these can be. Um, just a couple of examples from some residential applications of, you know, some, some well-used but truly beautiful um, stairs, very grand, large, intricately carved newel posts, the balusters, handrail. Um, it really makes a statement in the foyer of this home uh, when you come in. The same thing on this side, and it's really starting to be integrated into um, the decorative um, casing and millwork. So it really becomes part of the structure, not just a part of the circulation. This example is really taking that idea of being built into all of that woodwork and, you know, um, decorative paneling kind of you know, a step further, um, being built into the level changes, turning the corner with a flat landing, um, you know, part of the window treatment and everything. So stairs can really be quite grand. Uh, we can get into, um, you know, those more traditional, decorative, you know, older buildings, uh, but they can have a lighter, uh, you know, more modern spin to them. Um, you know, a common way to do that is, you know, in a sense to go through and kind of whitewash everything. You know, a lot of that decoration um, can be, you know, painted white um, and kind of lighten up the space. So, you know, really kind of considering um, similar aesthetics, you know, similar, you know, intricacies, but then, um, you know, the treatment, you know, with, with the color um, can have a profound impact. So, you know, just kind of, you know, clarifying some of that terminology with a couple of drawings here. Uh, the drawing on the left is more of an isometric showing, you know, some simple stairs in 3D. The image on the right is, um, you know, more of a elevation, uh, kind of a section um, in a sense. Uh, you know, and some of the really important things we want to point out is, okay, so how are the stairs constructed? You know, what's holding them up and then what's holding you up? Uh, first thing we want to think about is what's generally referred to as a stringer, although the structural stringer of the stairs is really called the carriage, and that's this element right here. So that um, you'll find at least on both sides in some capacity, maybe down the center, depending on the construction. Um, you'll also see here on the uh, left side of these stairs, we have it referred to as a stringer, kind of that outer portion. Uh, but that's what we put, you know, at least the tread on the part that we step on. So that leads us to the tread. You know, that's the flat, you know, generally board, but it, you know, it might be tile or metal or something like that. Uh, but that's the portion that, you know, a person steps on to go up and down the stairs. And then the vertical piece, the, you know, part that is referred to as kind of like the rise really of the stair, what makes that vertical portion up is the riser. Okay. Um, we also have the front of the tread, and that's referred to as the nosing. And if we look over here on the right, the nosing um, hangs out over the edge of the stairs, you know, prescribed amount, just a little bit. It might just be a continuation of the wood, you know, especially in a residential application. It may also be, you know, covered in metal or rubber or something like that um, in certain applications as well. And then we get over to the handrail, you know, which you actually hold on to as you go up and down the stairs. This could be just attached to a wall, but in this case, it's actually part of the stair and kind of resting on the stringer here. Um, and then in between, we have the balusters, so those vertical pieces, in this case, that are going up and down. And then, um, as we saw in some of those examples, especially in those older, kind of more Victorian homes, at the end, that large decorative post is the newel post. So thinking about, you know, residential codes, um, you know, codes being... Uh, regulations that are going to be applying to stairways, in this case, either for a single family dwelling or a two family dwelling um, and townhouses. Um, and these are all subject to the International Residential Code, the IRC. So, you know, something we need to think about when we're um, working with stairs is, I mean, it, it kind of, it seems obvious, right? But the stairs need to be very, very consistent in size to meet code. So there can't be um, a difference of more than three eighths of an inch um, between any um, any stair and a flight of stairs between the rise or runs. So they need to be very, very consistent. Um, and then when we think about um, the landing, the portion at the top and the bottom of the stairs, we need a minimum of 36 inches 
in the direction of travel. So you can't have stairs that begin or end, you know, depending uh, which which direction you're coming from, that have a a smaller landing than 36 inches for safety reasons, um, of course. And so then here we see, you know, a few more pieces of information with the residential stair codes. So the rise, you know, from the top surface of one tread to the top surface of the other um, is seven and three quarters inch max. And then the run, which really is, you know, comprised of the tread, the portion you step on from the nose of one to the nosing of the next is a minimum of 10 inches. And that nosing itself, that little overhang, um, is three quarters to one and a quarter inch. Okay. And as we think more about stairs, you know, thinking about, you know, ascending from one level to the next, uh, we need to think about minimum headroom, right? Because, you know, sometimes we're, we're going into open spaces, but sometimes we have, you know, the next floor, balconies, you know, things that will be coming overhead. And the absolute minimum headroom that you can have is six foot, eight inches. So minimum, minimum of six foot, eight. And then also, you know, thinking about uh, those balusters coming down, um, where they may or may not be meeting the stairs or the stringer, um, the spacing in between, this becomes really uh, important for safety reasons. So in this condition where the balusters are kind of meeting at, uh, you know, another piece of wood or metal or whatever it might be coming down, that gap that's created there, that kind of triangular gap, um, cannot allow a passage of a six inch sphere. So it has to be smaller than that. Um, the spacing between the balusters must not allow a passage of a four inch sphere. And then looking at um, the height of the rails here going down the stairs must be at least 34 inches. And you'll find in a lot of older um, homes, these will actually be lower. And you'll notice it um, if you encounter it because it can be a little disconcerting. Um, and if there's a balcony guard, a minimum of 36. So if that's higher than 30 inches off the next level. So why is that? <laughs> well, you know, we have to have all these safety precautions because, well, pets, kids, who knows, um, might try, you know, intentionally or not to stick their heads through them. And it's sure a lot easier to get your head through than it is to get it back out. So we need to be careful. So then thinking about stairs in a commercial sense, um, the, the codes are similar, but you know, of course, a little bit different. Um, so when we're thinking about commercial stair codes, uh, we need to think about the stair riser height shall be seven inches maximum and four inches minimum. And the stair tread depth shall be 11 inches minimum. So a little bit different than the residential code. So stairs, of course, also, you know, especially in commercial, um, really need to be uniform in size and shape. That's really important for people's safety because you expect a pattern and predictability when using stairs. And if they fluctuate, that can cause tripping and falling and, and a lot of terrible things. So the tolerance between the largest and smallest riser height um, or between the largest and smallest tread depth shall not exceed 0.375 inch in any flight of stairs. So if the stairs are not an emergency egress, okay, not an emergency egress, solid risers, so the vertical portion, are not required for stairways provided that the opening between the treads does not permit the passage, again, of a sphere with a diameter of four inches. So you can have open risers um, as in a public space, in a commercial space, as long as it's not an emergency egress path, like, you know, getting out of the building for an emergency, you know, a fire or something like that. Um, and they have to be, you know, less than four inches of space. So also thinking about codes in relation to stairs, obviously stairs, you know, aren't ideal for everyone to get around um, for a lot of reasons, right? So we also need to think about ramps, okay? So, um, you know, thinking about ramps, the maximum slope that we can have is a 1 to 12 ratio, okay? Um, and that means that really from, you know, getting up, 
you know, a fairly short level, we need a fairly long ramp because we don't want it to be too difficult to go up to require too much force. And you don't want it to be too steep going down either. Um, then on, you know, either end, we need a, you know, minimum clear space and we need minimum landings. And we have that five foot requirement, you know, for starting, stopping, maneuvering. And then um, we'll have also have, you know, guardrail, guardrails or handrails um, in that 34 to 38 inch um, range again. So here's another, you know, drawing showing that. So, you know, showing the, the ramp, the maximum slope, again, is a 1 to 12. The preferred slope, you know, if, if you're able to do it, is a 1 to 16 ratio. Um, you know, again, showing that 34 to 38 inch height for the railing. Um, that you'll need that five foot um, space at the bottom um, and that 24 inch space there up at the top. And the 12 inches is noting that um, at, at the end of the ramp, um, you need that handrail um, to extend out an additional 12 inches. So you never want a handrail to stop at the exact you know end of the stairs or end of the ramp because people will still be expecting it to be there to hold on um, and that can cause you know tripping falling and you know anything um, like that so you know just kind of thinking about you know stairs and ramps and you know all of these vertical circulation paths they you know they get us to where we need to be but they're also uh, you know, beautiful, decorative, statement-making elements in a space and should be given a lot of attention.